Good afternoon, everybody. Here we are again, and I will start this afternoon's assembly with an apology. An apology that I think it's been three weeks since we did our last assembly. And part of the reason for that gap is because in school, I've been working incredibly hard with Mrs Walker, our leadership team, and some of our governors on trying to arrange the school in a way that we can begin to bring more pupils back to school. I'm sorry for those of you that can't come back to school. I'm sure you're all chumping at the bit, ready to come back into school. But the government have given us really clear guidelines on what we have to do in school. And because of the space that we've got, because of the number of staff that we've got here, because of the number of children that we've got and some of the limitations on what we're allowed to do, we just can't get you all back in. For those of you that are coming to school, you'll know this, but it's a bit of a strange place at the moment in school. Our normal classes, they've gone, and they've been replaced with what we call pods of up to 10 pupils. Sometimes those pods are mixed year groups. Some of those pods have got children from Honeypot in, as well as children in year six. It's a big, broad range of ages. And those pods aren't allowed to touch each other. They're not allowed to come into contact with each other at all during the school day. So the children have to have their lunches in their classroom, packed lunches in their classroom. They're allowed to go outside to play, but on the playground and on the field, we've got uh, ribbons cordoning off different areas of the outside space. And the pods have their own area. And that's where they have to play. They can't play with children in other pods. So it's a little bit strange. The kids doing fantastically well so if you've been coming to school thank you so much you've been brilliant equally if you're at home thank you so much you've been brilliant carry on with your home learning not making too much of a fuss that you can't come back to school we'd love you to come back and hopefully as the time goes on some of the rules might change and we might be able to get more and more pupils back to school but at the moment there's loads of new things that are happening at home as well. So lots of you this week will have been having a Zoom meeting with your class. And all of the teachers that have done their meetings so far have come back to me and said how brilliant you were and how fun it was and how great it was to see you all uh, and at least just read a story to you or do something. Some, I think some of you have played some games and things like that. We're also going to be continuing to roll out some of the things like Microsoft Teams, which will allow you to receive some work in all of the year groups uh, or watch your videos online and be able to respond to your teachers far easily, more easily uh, than you have been so far. But now that we've got those pupils back into school that are going to be coming back into school, we've worked out most of the logistics around that. Hopefully I'll have enough time to continue with our reading assemblies. So we shall carry on with Winnie the Pooh and today's story is Piglet Me to Heaven. One day, when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a heffalump today, Piglet. Oh, what was he doing? asked Piglet. Oh, just lumping along, said Christopher Robin. I don't think he saw me. I saw one once, said Piglet. At least I think I did, he said. Or oh, only perhaps he wasn't. So did I, said Pooh, wondering what a heffalump was like. You don't often see them, said Christopher Robin carelessly. And not now, said Piglet. Oh, not at this time of year, said Pooh. Then they all talked about something else until it was time for Pooh and Piglet to go home together. At first, they stumped along the path which edged the hundred acre wood. They didn't say much to each other. But when they came to the stream and they helped each other across the stepping stones and were able to walk side by side and over the heather, they began to talk in a friendly way about this and that. And Piglet said, If you see what I mean, Pooh. And Pooh said, oh, It's just what I think myself, Piglet. And Piglet said, But on the other hand, Pooh, we must remember. And Pooh said, Quite true, Piglet, although I had forgotten it for a moment. And then just as they came to the six pine trees, Pooh looked around to see that nobody else was listening and said in a very solemn voice, I'm just going to check that the camera is still rock on. It is. Piglet, I've decided something. And what have you decided, Pooh? I've decided 
to catch a heifer. Pooh nodded his head several times as he said this and waited for Piglet to say, How? Or, Pooh, you couldn't! Or something helpful of that sort. But Piglet said nothing. The fact was, Piglet was wishing that he had thought about it first. I shall do it, said Pooh, after waiting a little longer, by means of a trap, and it must be a cunning trap. So you will have to help me, Piglet. Pooh, said Piglet, feeling quite happy again now. I will, and then he said, how shall we do it, Pooh? And Pooh said, that's just it. How? And then they sat down together to think it out. Pooh's first idea was that they should dig a very deep pit, and then the heifer lump would come along and fall into the pit, and... Why? said Piglet. Why what? said Pooh. Why would he fall in? Pooh rubbed his nose with his paw and said that the heifer lump might be walking along, humming a little song and looking up at the sky and wondering if it would rain so he wouldn't see the very deep pit until he was halfway down when it would be too late. Piglet said that this was a very good trap, but supposing it were raining already? Pooh rubbed his nose again and said that he hadn't thought of that, and that then he brightened up and said if it were raining already, the heffalump would be looking at the sky wondering if it would clear up, and so he wouldn't see the very deep pit until he was halfway down when it would be too late. Piglet said that now that this point had been explained, he thought it was a cunning trap. Pooh was very proud when he heard this, and he felt that the heifer lump was as good as caught already. But there was just one other thing which had to be thought about, and this was it. Where should they dig the very deep pit? Piglet said that the best place would be somewhere where a heifer lump was, just before he fell into it, only about a foot further on. But then he would see us digging it said Pooh, and not if he was looking uh, at the sky. He would suspect, said Pooh, if he happened to look down. He thought for a very long time and then added sadly, hmm. It isn't as easy as I thought. I suppose that's why heffalumps hardly ever get caught. That must be it, said Piglet. They sighed and got up. And when they'd taken a few gorse prickles out of themselves, they sat down again. And all the time, Pooh was saying to himself, If only I could think of something. For he felt sure that a very clever brain could catch a heffalump if only he knew the right way to go about it. Suppose, he said to Piglet, let me try that again in, Pig in Pooh's voice. Suppose, he said to Piglet, you wanted to catch me. How would you do it? Well, said Piglet, I should do it like this. I should make a trap and I should put a jar of honey in the trap and you would smell it and you would go in after it and... Oh, and I would go in after it, said Pooh excitedly, only very carefully as, so as not to hurt myself. And I would get that jar of honey and I should look around the edges first of all, pretending that there wasn't any more, you know, and then I should walk away and think about it for a little, and then I should come back and start licking in the middle of the jar, and then, yes, yes, well, never mind about that. There you would be, and there I should catch you. Now, the first thing to think of is, what do heffalumps like? I should think acorns, shouldn't you? We'll get a lot. I say, wake up, Pooh. Pooh had gone into a happy dream, and he woke with a start and said that honey was a much more trappy thing than haycorns. Piglet didn't think so. They were just going to argue about it when Piglet remembered that if they put acorns in the trap, he would have to find the acorns, but if they put honey, then Pooh would have to give up some of his own honey. And so he said, all right, honey it is, just as Pooh remembered it too, and was going to say, all right, haycorns. Honey, said Piglet to himself in a thoughtful way, as if it were now settled. I'll dig the pit while you go and get honey. Okay, we shall leave it there for today and we'll finish that story hopefully tomorrow uh, and see whether or not Pooh and Piglet managed to catch a heifer. 
One more thing to do. We haven't been doing this in our uh, assembly so far, and it occurred to me the other day, what was I thinking? There is a way of engaging you and getting you active in these assemblies, because we have a little chant, don't we? That we're in primary school. We, we have a saying that we go over and over and over and over and over in an assembly. So let's do it. It goes a little bit like this. At Willingham Primary School, we... So that we become... There we go. I shall see you very soon.